Welcome back to Caker 101. Today's topic, we're going to tackle modeling chocolate roses. This tutorial is step-by-step, minute-by-minute, and in real time, so you can follow along if you wish. All you need is a ball of modeling chocolate. Video link will be in the comments or in the description so you can see how it's made, because we do have a video on the channel about that. What you want to do first is grab some of that modeling chocolate and get it nice and warmed up with your hands. Get it workable by kneading it in your fingers or on your table. Be sure to wrap up the extra. I didn't uh, for the video, but it would be helpful to keep it from drying out. Make sure it's nice and pliable. Not too warm because the warmer your hands are, the harder it will be to work with. But definitely get it warmed up so that you can use it because if you've ever worked with modeling chocolate as it sits, it gets pretty hard. So I look forward to walking you through this. It's a quick guide that I put together. It's about a 20 minute video and step by step. You need no tools except for your two hands and a ball of modeling chocolate. Start with your ball and from one end of it, I like to create, oh, I got some blue modeling chocolate on my hand still. I like to create the rose button, okay? So pinch the top into a point and then from there, kind of turn it into a teardrop. Whether it's a bit crooked or not doesn't matter because you can manipulate all of that. Now again because you want to keep things this warm so that it doesn't solidify on you and if it's too warm don't handle it too much but from the bottom of your ball you're going to break off your pieces that you need while still holding this in your hand. You never need to put it down, right? So now I have a slightly, I have a large blueberry size piece, okay? Flatten that out into a rose petal. And it's just the same process over and over and over again. And I use the formula one, three, five, and if I'm going larger, seven. So one petal in the center, three around that one, five around that one, and then seven around the next level or the next row. So putting your row, first rose petal about center to your rose bud, you're going to wrap it around one side and come around the other side, closing this in with not completely closing it off. Okay. And just stick it to itself and pull that back open. Okay. So that's your first pedal. Now you're going to take another one. You're going to do the same process. Okay, this is why cakes with flowers on them are so expensive because every single rose petal is created by hand. The benefit to doing modeling chocolate roses over a gum paste rose is well, it's much more edible. Gum paste will set up completely firm, uh, almost like a porcelain, whereas a modeling chocolate will always be edible. Even once it sets up, it'll melt again in your mouth. Okay, so this first First of three on this next row, the first one overlaps where this one closed off, okay? So halfway between the two, I'm only going to attach it on one side. Leave this side open for now. So just gently rub it there so the chocolate connects to itself. Leave this side open. The reason you need to do that is because you have to tuck the next rose petal into it, okay? So again, still holding this in one hand and creating another rose petal here. It's okay if they naturally crack at the top because if you ever look at a natural rose, they're not completely smooth petals around the top. They get breaks and rips and cracks in them and it's what makes them look a little more realistic. So the next rose petal goes tucks in underneath this one. You attach that one to the rose bud and then again leaving this side open to connect your third petal. So I still haven't attached this one yet. I'm only attaching one side of every rose petal. Create your final one for this row. So again, using the one, three, and five. I use the same numbers when I do my gum paste roses, one, three, and five. You can put hundreds of petals in here if you want to make them nice and tight and more realistic. But for me, for a process purpose and being able to produce more, this is just what I've started doing. 
and no one ever complains that they're not um, botanically correct roses. They still look beautiful, okay? So in underneath the second rose petal, we're going to tuck the third one. So again, leaving that open. And now all three should at some point, your last one should overlap the beginning of your first one. You see that? So your last one you put in, that's where my first one started. It comes around and overlaps. So if I'm happy with the placement of the one side of those rose petals, I'm gonna go in now and attach the second side of every petal. When I do that, I like to take from the part that you attached first, so this side of the petal, slightly bend it out gently with your finger, and then come down and gently rub it and attach it on, okay? So this is your time to manipulate the rose petals to look however you want them to look when they're finished, because once it sets, that's it. There's no really going back and changing it. So if you need to manipulate the petals to make them look like they have movement, now is your time. So again, bring this last petal around to the first one and pinch the petal where you need to, to make it look as natural or as open or beautiful as you wish it to be. So around this set of three petals, we're gonna add five more. Exact same process, long, it's tedious, I get it. But this is why I believe the summer that Angela helped me, I did a cake that had 40 roses on it. And Angela can pop in the comments and refresh my memory if she was there that summer. Um, they paid over a thousand dollars just for the sugar work. So just for the sugar flowers, I charged them a thousand dollars. That didn't include their cake, their delivery, nothing along those lines. Um, it was just crazy. Ah, uh, yes, she remembers that one. Uh, and then half of them were bronzed. So I ended up having to go back in on every petal and bronze the, sh the tips of the petals. Uh, it was crazy, but they knew what they were paying for. So when we attach our next row, the first petal is always going to overlap where two of them met. Okay, so these two sealed off here. I'm gonna take my first petal and it's gonna go halfway between those two. Okay. You're going to again only attach one side of it. So gently rub one side to get it to attach. By doing them in your hand like this, it gives you this thing, this ball down here to hold on to. Right? So this is why I enjoy doing it this way with modeling chocolate. Fond uh, gum paste is not so easy to work with, right? Because it needs to actually dry. So that's another benefit to modeling chocolate. I can make these, they'll set in place right away, and I can use them right away. If I want to make gum paste roses, I have to do them a day or two ahead of time, allow them to dry before I can actually use them on a cake. But again, in the summertime, I may not be able to do modeling chocolate roses, pending where the wedding is. If it's an outdoor wedding in the middle of summer, they're gonna melt. It's chocolate, it will, met, it will melt under extreme heat, okay? So keep all of those things in mind when you decide what medium you wanna use. Your second rose petal, again, tucks in right where your first one is not attached. And you're just gonna continue the process and create three more. And you'll notice, again, like any flower, no two rose petals are exactly the same. I'm not making sure I'm ripping off the exact same amount every time. I'm keeping it very organic and very fluent because I don't want them to look like they're manufactured. I want them to look handmade. I want them to look homemade so that my clients know how much love and work I put into every one of their flowers. Okay, I didn't, you can get cutters and when I do gum paste flowers, I do use cutters uh, just because it's such a, it's a stickier product and it doesn't act the same as modeling chocolate. But where possible, you still have to attach each one of those gum paste petals the same one at a time. You still have to manipulate their edges one at a time. So there is still that kind of work that goes into it, but I don't want them to look like every single one of them looks the exact same. Okay, so again, I'm still only attaching one side and I got one more to do. So right now it's not ideal, doesn't look anything like I want it to, but 
the finishing touches come once I add the last petal and I go back and manipulate them all to the way I want them to look. Could you, if you were not standing at a table in the middle of a wine warehouse, do this, all of your petals and lay them out and then put them on? Absolutely. But this is just a technique that I basically developed because I was standing in a wine warehouse teaching complete strangers on how to make roses and I didn't have a table for everyone to work at. Okay. Um, tuck your last one in to the fourth pet under the fourth petal and over the first petal. I'm happy with how they all line up. I'm going to go back now and I'm going to attach the second side and give the petals their shape. So manipulate them however you see fit. Curl them under, tuck them over, do whatever you think looks pretty. Folding down the second side of your rose petal is going to make it appear more open. And there it is. A chocolate rose. Okay, you can do another row. If I was going to do another row of petals, I would do seven. And I would just, same process. Attach one side, tuck the next petal in under, and go right around the outside. And then I would finish it off. Now, once you're done, you don't need to leave this big ball in the end. You literally just pinch it off. And now you have a rose that you can stick on top of a cake. Okay, set it aside. If you wanted to do a rose bud, something a little smaller. Again, start with your ball. Pinch one end of it up into a teardrop so the whole thing looks like a teardrop. And then separate just a little bit of it so you have your rose bud center. And then this part down here is where you're pulling your petals from. Okay. A little too much. The beauty of these is if it doesn't look the way you want it to, you squish it and you start over. It's just like Play-Doh, guys. When you're sitting down, when I'm sitting down playing Play-Doh with the kids, generally bust out a rose. I believe I sent Angela a picture last week. We were playing Play-Doh with the kids. I made a rose. This is just practice wherever I can practice. Okay. So attaching your first rose petal. Again, if because I'm making a rose, but I'm not going to seal this one off all the way. Okay. So I'm going to bring the first one around. And just before it gets ready to close it off, I'm going to stop. Because now I can tuck my next one in underneath of that. Okay. Get a botanical book, literally get a flower book, get natural flowers, go to the store, buy some flowers, look at them, study them, see how they go together, take a rose, take it apart, petal by petal, and see how it actually all folds together. And it'll give you a good understanding of how flowers should be put together or how, should, how flowers should be made, because it's exactly the same process. And, but instead of it growing, you're building it. Underneath that first one, we're going to tuck in the next one. So now you can already see it's starting to get a nice tight center. Okay. I'm going to slightly bring it around. I'm not going to seal it off just yet. I'm going to tuck the next one in underneath of that one. So if you made red modeling chocolate, you could have some nice, beautiful red roses. If you did pink, you could have pink ones or white ones. I mean, you can do them however you wish. Again, I'm just using the brown because what tends to happen on video uh, is from the studio lights, it gets washed out. The white gets blown out and it just gets hard to see. If you had, if but you can color with cocoa butter. So if you did have a cocoa butter and a sprayer, you could color these after they were set by spraying them with cocoa butter um, that way. So again, tucking that one in and bringing it around. So you're getting a much tighter center than the last one. 
you can still do this same process if you wanted the center to be a lot tighter on say this one you can do this and then just keep adding all the way around until you get a larger rows um i just again don't for timing purposes and because if i'm making 40 of these for a cake i really don't want to be doing it with 100 rose petals per row if you need to get in here and make these a little tighter okay so if you're not happy with how those are opened up you can use it some kind of tool so this came with one of the wilton sets you can get a toothpick you can get a scribe tool you can get anything you just come in here and manipulate those petals to however you want them to look so that it's your desired flower okay you can keep going add another one Okay, just tuck it in under the last one, which I don't even know which one it is anymore. I think it's this one. Okay, and if I wanted to stop there, what I will do now is I'll go back and I will manipulate the ends of all of these petals to just be opened and flared slightly. So that it looks like it's starting to bloom. Okay, I'm happy with that one. I can take it, I can pinch it off, and I can add it to my chocolate arrangement on my cake. Right? You can make leaves out of these. So hang on, I'll see if I can. This is just, this came with the Wilton um, flower, gum paste flower kit, okay? Or you buy it separately, but it goes with that kit. So it's a veiner, so to give your rose petals or your rose leaves, rather, um, just checking on the other modeling chocolate before I ruin it, uh, give them texture, you can use this. You don't have to use it, but you can. So again, this would be a freeform uh, leaf. You can get a cutter, and I have many of them. Um, but if you're trying to keep it as organic as possible and not use them and keep it freeform, what I did, I'll start over because I didn't really explain it to you. I don't even know if you can see because I'm trying not to knock the camera over. Just start with a ball. I'm going to roll it out into a long teardrop. And from the sides, I'm going to pinch, leaving a thicker vein in the middle. Again, I'm not too concerned about perfection here. I want them to be organic. I want them to be free form. Okay. So if you see, I have a thicker vein down the center with thinner edges. Okay. Then you're going to take this and you're going to lay it on top of your veining mat. You're going to gently press it in, trying not to ruin that center vein that you made. And when you flip it over, you're going to have a textured leaf petal. Uh, leaf, not leaf petal, leaf. If you want, you can go in after. And I'll never find what I'm looking for because I wasn't intending to do this, but I do have one here. You can take any kind of knife, a paring knife, a blade, an X-Acto knife, whatever it is you want, and come in on the sides and just give them that natural rose. Texture on the side, so it's not so blunt, okay? I'm using the back of the blade because it's a brand new one and I didn't want it to cut so deep. Okay. And then if I wanted to attach it to the actual rose itself, I can do so. So I'm just going to gently melt it to the rose there, and then I can tip it out however I want. 
so that it's now part of the rose itself. Again, you can use colored chocolate to do this stuff. You don't need to use brown. You can make green, you can make red. Make one more and then our other chocolate's actually ready to knead, so I don't want to let it go too long. So just make a ball, a long teardrop, and then from the center outwards, you're going to pinch it into the shape you want. They're all different sizes, so I'll make this one smaller. Again, press it down on my veining mat. So that when I flip it over, I have a beautiful veined leaf. And then with my blade, just gonna rough up the edge. And I'm gonna add that to my flowers down here. Okay, so I'll bring that whole thing up so you can see it. Oh, my first petal didn't, or my first leaf didn't stick. If you find they're not sticking at all, you can add a little drop of water, depending how cold your, your area is. Add a little drop of water to be able to stick them together. But I'm not concerned about that right now. But like that in about what 10 minutes and that's with instruction you were able to make a nice little arrangement that could go on the top of a cake even chocolate on chocolate is beautiful so if i made a chocolate birthday cake with nice chocolate borders in different colors or variations of chocolate and added this to the top of it it would be stunning okay but again, the benefits to this are I can use that stuff right away. If I had gum paste, I wouldn't be able to do that. I'd have to wait for the gum paste to dry. I'd have to probably wire it to stick it to the cake. And then no one can really eat it because gum paste dries so hard that it's not something you can eat. All right. So that's modeling chocolate. That's a quick rose tutorial. Again, you don't have to hold it all in your hand as you're doing it if you're not comfortable. I find it easier, but I could take make my center if I wanted to. I could stick it to my table. I could make my petals. The more you make, the faster you're gonna have to work. So if I decided I wanted to make the first four petals all at one time and lay them on my table, means I'm going to have to work extremely fast because they will start to set up, right? The chocolate will start to solidify depending how cold your area is. So the bakery for me down here is always cold. There's never heat on down here at all ever during the year, winter included. Um, and in the summer, I have an air conditioning unit, which is right next to me that I have on 24 seven to keep it cold down here. Okay. So it's not ideal to make a bunch of them at one time because the chocolate's gonna set and I won't be able to manipulate them. But I could make a bunch of them and then I'd pick up my center and I'd start wrapping them, you know, according to the exact same process. The one, the three, the five. Okay, you can make them as big or as little as you wish. So if your center starts out small, well, you're gonna end up with a small rose. If you start with a huge center, you're gonna wanna make your petals larger and you're gonna end up with a much bigger rose. 